Hello, everybody, and welcome one more time to Mailbag Monday. This is SFF180. I am your host, Thomas, as always. I hope you all had a lovely weekend. And yes, yes, I know I have gotten this week's mailbag up appallingly late. I am terribly sorry for that. Uh, I plead tiredness <laughs> from the weekend. Uh, I spent much of the weekend at ArmadilloCon 37 here in Austin, a lovely uh, local convention that has become a bit of an institution here in town. Strictly literary SFF. Uh, wonderful time. Uh, hung out with some great people, some terrific writers. Ken Liu was there uh, as guest of honor. Wesley Chu was there, although I didn't get a chance to talk to him. I'm kind of sad about that. Uh, but I was one of the instructors in the Writers' Workshop, again, as I have been for many, many years now. A, a good time overall, and a great chance to see a whole lot of folks that I'm sorry to say I only really ever see once a year, but, you know, at least that's why social media exists. Okay, uh, first announcement before we get into the books, and we have uh, about seven packages here this week, so it's uh, a good-sized week, you know, good, solid, typical week, and judging by how many of these envelopes are white in color, I'm going to think that we are very heavily tour books favored this week. So we'll get into these just here in a second, but I want to remind you all that the 1st of August is coming up, and that means that the read-alongs are going to begin for the BookTube SFF Awards. As you know by now, we have had our shortlist, and we are now going to be doing the read-alongs through August, September, and October. And if you're looking at your screen right now, you can see all of the titles of uh, the August read-along, the re August read-along titles. Uh, these are the books we're doing this month. And if you check out the Goodreads group, you should see uh, different uh, discussion threads uh, have now been opened up for each of the read-along titles. Anyway, head on over there, but uh, we're doing it. So get your button gear and read some of these books. If you have not already done so, I am very fortunate that I've already read uh, both of uh, this month's best novel read-along nominees, so that's going to save me a whole lot of time there. Let's stop screwing around, get into these books, and uh, see what we have this week, shall we? Uh, this first package, however, is a random penguin title. And it is the finished copy, the long-awaited new title from China Mieville. It is a short story collection called Three Moments of an Explosion. I have already gotten this in ARC form, but uh, this goes on sale August the 4th uh, from Del Rey. It says, the fiction of multiple award-winning author China Mieville is powered by intelligence and imagination. London awakes one morning to find itself besieged by a sky of floating icebergs. Destroyed oil rigs, mysteriously reborn, clamber from the sea and onto the land, driven by an obscure but violent purpose. An anatomy student cuts open a cadaver to discover impossibly intricate designs carved into a corpse's bones, designs clearly present from birth bearing mute testimony to what? Of such concepts and unforgettable images are made the 28 stories in this collection, many published here for the first time by turns speculative, satirical, and heart-wrenching, fresh in form and language, and featuring a cast of damaged yet hopeful seekers who come face to face with the deep weirdness of the world, and at times the deeper weirdness of themselves. Three Moments of an Explosion is a fitting showcase for one of our most original voices. I'm very excited. August 4th from Del Rey. And if we're starting out that strong, it's going to be a hell of a week indeed. Let's see, this one comes from Pyre. And this is the art for a book called The Geomancer, uh, which comes out November the 3rd. Uh, this is a new novel uh, set in the same universe uh, as the Vampire Empire series. Uh, the authors are Clay Griffith and Susan Griffith, uh, and they have already done a previous series set in this universe, and this is the, uh, the first uh, book in a new one set in the same universe. So if you've been reading these, this, uh, this should be very exciting. You know, I'm not a vampire person myself, to be perfectly honest, but there is at least a bit of a different spin on the premise here. Uh, it's an uh, alternate history urban fantasy series uh, with vampires. Uh, let's see, I think that it is set in uh, London. Yeah, bloody murders in London raise the specter that Adele's geomancy is failing and the vampires might return. Um, so I think that it is set in, in kind of a past London. Um, so it's trying not to just recycle tropes in a lazy fashion, but uh, give a whole new spin to the concept. So The Geomancer will be available uh, from Pyre Books on November the 3rd by Clay and Susan Griffith. Okay, and here we are, I think, with a whole big battery of tour titles. And it's the finished copy of The End of All Things by John Scalzi. This is maybe or maybe not the final Old Man's War novel, uh, but it is the direct sequel to The Human Division. Uh, which I have reviewed here on the channel and on my website. It's a, a very rare instance of a book getting a five-star rating from me. Uh, fantastic book. And so I have been very, very eagerly awaiting this one. This comes out the 11th of August from Tor. 
Uh, yeah, John is, is uh, quite simply on a roll with this one. Uh, it says, um, The end of all things takes over where the human division left off, returning the reader to Scalzi's thrilling universe in which humans have expanded into space, only to find a universe populated with multiple alien species bent on their destruction. Thus was the Colonial Union formed to help protect us from the many hostile beings lurking in the galaxy. The Colonial Union used the Earth and its excess population for colonists and soldiers. It was a good arrangement for the Colonial Union. Now the Earth wants no more part of it. The Colonial Union is living on borrowed time. In this collapsing universe, CDF Lieutenant Harry Wilson and the Colonial Union diplomats he works with race against the clock to discover who is behind attacks on the Union and on alien races, to seek peace with a suspicious, angry Earth, and keep humanity's Union intact or else risk oblivion and extinction, the end of all things. August the 11th, from John Scalzi, Tor Books, The End of All Things. And as I'm sure you know, uh, if you've been following along, uh, John's previous book, Lock-In, made the final shortlist for our BookTube SFF Awards, but if you have not gotten this far into the Old Man's War series, uh, by now you really need to catch up because it just gets better. And here's another one that a lot of you folks I know have been looking forward to, and I have actually already started this. I got the arc for it, uh, but here is the lovely, lovely finished copy of The Dinosaur Lords by Victor Milan. Uh, comes out on, well, comes out tomorrow, July 28th. Uh, it says, described by George R. R. Martin himself as Game of Thrones with dinosaurs, this release begins a new fantasy saga that is primed to satisfy fans of Tolkien, Martin, Sanderson, and Rothfuss, not to mention anyone enamored with Jurassic Park and the great Lost Reptiles. Welcome to Paradise, the sprawling, verdant, beautiful, and often cruel world of the Dinosaur Lords. In many ways, it mirrors 14th century Europe with its dynastic rivalries, religious wars, and Byzantine politics. Except here, there be dinosaurs. Men and women live on Paradise, as do dogs, cats, ferrets, goats, and horses, but dinosaurs predominate and come in all shades. Wildlife and monsters, tamed pets and beasts of burden, and also weapons of war. In the Empire of Nueva Europa, vast armies of dinosaur-mounted knights engage in battle in the field, while even more deadly games are played in throne rooms and temple halls. Like chess pieces across a lush game board, figures move around each other in a complicated dance of loyalty, betrayal, and above all, ambition. Milan's story is remarkable not only in its world building and sheer imagination, but for its diverse tapestry of ages, race, races, and sexual orientations, as well as its easy passing of the Bechdel test. The prolific author of almost 50 novels, Milan, is charging into epic fantasy atop a Tyrannosaurus Rex in full battle armor. So, guys, tomorrow, The Dinosaur Lords by Victor Milan. And this one is... Uh, this one is not a tour title, but it uh, comes from the same general publishing house. It's The Mountain. The author is David Goleman. And uh, this apparently is another one of these kind of sort of sf -nil, um is this an, an event group thriller, the first mission? So, uh, yeah, uh, he writes these kind of Crichton-y, mainstream, somewhat sf uh, but mostly adventure romp-type novels. And uh, his popular series is the series of the event group. And so here we are with the new one, The Mountain, by David Goleman. Uh, this comes out August the 4th. Um, let's see. In 1863, a, a meeting takes place between legendary war leaders, a secret alliance that will never show up in American history books. A clandestine arrangement has been struck for a single chance to heal a war-torn nation. The mission is to bring the greatest prize in the world back to American soil, remnants of prehistory's greatest ship and most startling mystery. The prize may lie on a mountaintop inside the fierce Ottoman Empire, yet the men who seek it are only days away from trying to kill one another, all right? Uh, and then in 2007, America's darkest agency, known only to a privileged few as the Event Group, has been tasked by the president to bring home a famous former astronaut who is on a mission to bring back the greatest biblical artifact, Noah's Ark. He's just throwing everything against the wall here. It will be up to the newly installed director of security at Department 5656, Major Jack Collins and his team of brilliant men and women, to rescue the archaeological expedition from forces that will kill to keep the mysterious artifacts inside the territorial borders of Turkey. Okay, so it could be kind of silly, but if you like this sort of thing, uh, this uh, I, I get the impression this is meant to be a standalone title in the Event Group series. So here you go, uh, David Goleman's The Mountain on August 4th. And last but not least, let's see, what could it be? What could it be? Hmm. Well, it could be this. It could be Last First Snow, the new book by Max Gladstone, the most recent book in the uh, craft sequence. 
uh, series. And this one, in fact, already came out. In fact, I already got an apology email from uh, the, the publicist on this particular one saying, sorry, we actually ran out of these and had to restock. So uh, Last First Snow, it came out on the 14th, apparently, and it's a standalone urban fantasy set in the same world as Three Parts Dead, Two Serpents Rise, and Full Fathom 5. It says we go back to where it all began. So if you uh, haven't read this series but have been hearing a lot about it because uh, everyone who reads it really seems to enjoy it, um, well, this, uh, this could be a good jumping on point. Uh, Forty years after the God Wars, the city of Dresadiel Lex bears the scars of liberation, especially in the poor districts still bound by the fallen gods' decaying edicts. The King in Red, the skeletal CEO of the company that now controls the city, hires Elaine Kaverian, a sharp young craftswoman, to fix the wards. But the people who live in the area have their own ideas. A protest rises against Elaine's work, led by Tamak, a warrior priest turned community organizer who wants to build a peaceful future for his city. So he's like Obama, uh, his wife and his young son. As Elaine digs, uh, drags Tamak and the King in Red to the bargaining table, old wounds reopen. Old gods stir in their graves, civil blood breaks to new mutiny, and profiteers circle in the desert sky. Elaine and Tamak must fight conspiracy, dark magic, and their own demons to save the peace, or failing that to save as many people as they can. Fans of China Mayville's Bas Log series and Catherine Addison's The God Goblin Emperor will find much to enjoy in this sophisticated and engaging read. All right then, Last First Snow by Max Gladstone is out now in stores from Tor Books. Oh no, wait, that wasn't the last one. I got one more right here. Hooray. Okay, I miscounted. And this is the final copy of The Edge of Dawn, another book that I believe I got as an arc some weeks back. Uh, this is uh, the latest in uh, a, a series that's been going on for quite a while. It's been a, a bit of a gap between books. This comes out uh, August the 4th. Uh, it's the tale of ancient war in the modern world between the forces that would enslave mankind and a small band of modern paladins who fight for the light of science and reason. So it's you know, science versus superstition sort of thing. In series opener, The Edge of Reason, we met Officer Richard Urt of the Albuquerque Police Department who became caught in the middle of this primal battle when he rescues a mysterious teenage girl from a trio of inhuman hunters. Recruited by the Lumina to serve as their latest paladin, Richard fights beside a handful of unlikely allies, including an adolescent sorceress, an enigmatic philanthropist, a sexy coroner, and a homeless god with multiple personalities. Oh. The story continued in The Edge of Ruin, where we saw Urt take the helm of Lumina Enterprises as the war escalated to horrifying new realities. And I don't want to say any more to avoid more spoilers if you haven't read these and are curious about them, but uh, the, the newest book, The Edge of Dawn, uh, is available on the 4th from Tor. And okay then, that's all of them this week. A pretty fascinating haul. Pretty damn good haul, wouldn't you say? As always, fire up the comments, let me know which of these books looks most exciting and interesting to you, which you would like to see me prioritize in the review queue. Uh, otherwise, if you enjoyed watching, please leave a like, share, and subscribe. Above all, that is what helps this channel to grow. And until I see all you guys next time, happy reading.